Hey everybody, welcome back. We're back here with the 29 GP and Tony over here. Howdy. We're pulling apart the clutch assembly. Now in order to get the clutch dogs out, there's just these small cotter pins. Pull the cotter pin, the, drop, the dog drops right out. If I can get a hold of it. Maybe with the pliers. Dog okay. drops right out. Now we're gonna work on getting this felt out of the center. There's a snap ring that goes in a groove inside here. What I like to do, anytime there's a snap ring involved, if it's holding something in place, I take something, like for instance, I use this large chunk of pipe and I just work my way around the edge and I hit kind of to drive that, whatever it's keeping inside there, I drive it away from, from the snap ring to release the tension on the ring. And then it's just a matter of prying out the ring. And then we'll keep disassembling it from there. But pretty sure it's just this plate that gets pried out of here. Just like that. So we got our plate. And that holds the felt in place which we're gonna to have to see if we can order or maybe make our own, get a sheet of felt material. And behind that should be another plate maybe, I don't I know. this is pressed in. Or a cup that's pressed in. And then you've got a roller bearing behind that. And I think there's a bronze sleeve down inside there. So, what's the next, uh, next plan? <laughs> <laughs> Clean them? Clean? Okay. Clean and lots of cleaning. We'll flip it over and see what we can get out of there. Yep. All right, so the T-bolts, where'd they go? Right here. They slide through the clutch dogs themselves, and they're held onto the front. Those are the three bolts you see come through the front on the clutch cover. They have two sets of cotter pins on them, and then you got your dogs here. We've already found a broken clutch dog here, so we're going to go ahead and remove all these, clean everything up and probably remove this portion, clean all that up, and degrease the entire inside of the pulley. At least that's the plan. So we'll give it a shot. It's just a matter of removing these cotter pins, the pins slide out and the dogs come out. So go to work, Tony. Yeah, I'll do my best here. I can't do everything. Yeah, especially one hand and <laughs> They need a cotter pin unbending tool. There's an idea. Pat that sucker. Mm-hmm. Whoever thought of cotter pins. They're, they're love hate for me. You're really struggling with these cotter pins. I hate them. They're like the devil to me. They work. They work great. Would you rather have roll pins? At times, yes. <laughs> Just like Squatch's uh, Minneapolis Moline, that's all they have is roll pins in that thing. Mm -hmm. If I struggle <laughs> too much, I usually just take the, take a snips and just cut them. You're struggling and it's driving me nuts. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a little sped today. You'll figure it out. I have faith in you. No, you don't. I don't have faith in myself. It's that's, been a day. That's not an attitude to have. Yeah. <laughs> You're close enough where you can just use the vice grip to squeeze them together. Okay, smart Alec. Just saying. 
two brains can be better than one sometimes. True. But when you just have two half brains working on one thing, it's really just a whole brain. <laughs> that sounds like something that Pete would say. Well, I'll be dipped. Nala. Okay, well, you get the point. We got to pull these cotter pins out. <laughs> okay, guys, we got the clutch dogs out of the backside here. Again, it's just a cotter pin with a cross pin that goes where the dogs are. And then there's vertical risers, if you will, or I'm sorry, horizontal risers that go inside, inside this area here. You pull those out. We also knocked out the big bearing that goes in the front of the pulley. There's that cup for the inside of the uh, felt, and then the bearing rides behind it. All I did was I took a punch from the back side and just lightly tapped on the race until it pushed everything out. So that's all apart. This portion here, I believe, is pressed together. So I don't think we'll be tearing that part down. But we'll clean all this up with some good degreaser, pressure wash it, and then uh, go from there. So, the joy of cleaning parts. This is just a bucket of 15% ethanol, 10 to 15%. E85 works really good as a degreaser, it's a great solvent. Um, plus, it's cheaper than all the other gasolines. But this is what we had on hand, so this is what we're using. And this is a shot of that big bearing. Again, you know, that's, I got pretty big hands and that's a big bearing. So keep at it, Tony. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, we worked on cleaning up a bunch of the bolts, chased the threads, um, cleaned up a bunch of the small parts that go in here. But right now we're gonna take apart the clutch fork assembly. Basically all you have holding this together there's one cotter pin up here. You got to remove that cotter pin and then the top shaft will slide out and Tony's going to do that. And then the fork itself will come out. So now a big problem that people have with these is these housings get really wore where the shaft rides and then the fork or I should say the pulley brake pad where it mounts here these holes get wore out and same with the actual pulley brake like the foot pad mount those holes get wore out in combination with the bad pin that runs through all of it so usually what the fix is is you drill through or mill through this casting some people put a bushing some install a larger pin same thing goes here mill through all the way down and back and then they press a bushing in and that trues everything up and tightens everything up. Same thing with the foot pad on here, the brake pad. That'll get milled or drilled out and bushed as well. So that's how you take apart the clutch fork. And uh, now I'm gonna bring it over to Rudy's and see if there's something we can't fix on it to get it all somewhat back into where it should be. So that's all I've got for right now. Mm -hmm.